This is Lisa Bowles, your Soul Mapper, and you're watching another episode of Soul Map TV. When it comes to the process of building a purpose-based business, I've started to notice that across the board, whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur or a seasoned entrepreneur, we kind of get stumped by the same universal things. And here's the catch. Most of us go looking for common sense advice to help us you know, get out of the stump, right? The problem is when you're building something that's supposed to change the world, common sense isn't gonna cut it. And that actually proves to be one of the stumps. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. Um, one of the top stumps that I've noticed is a belief, a foundational belief, conviction, assumption that action is the catalyst inside the process that generates or creates results. Now, you may be kind of cross-eyed right now going, well, it is. And if you are, then I want you to really pay close attention to this because there's some surprising new research that kind of turns this upside down and on its head. Right. The CEO of Freedom Personal Development, Eric Plattenberg, during years of research discovered that there's actually three components to results creation, okay? Um, component number one, intention. Now I know that most of you have heard about that one. Component number two is action. Um, what we take to create results. And then the third one that some of us have been talking about and some of us believe in, but this is the place where things get really interesting in a strange sort of way, is state. The state, the inner experience, or let's see, the beingness, who you're being, who you are, as you take that action, as you intend to take action, and the intention behind it. So let's just play a little game for a second. Um, which one of those three do you happen to think is most responsible for the results that you generate in the world? Okay, and don't let anything I've already said color your response. Just, you'll probably find one pops up in your head. Which one is the linchpin? Without it, nothing else would happen. Okay, most people said action. And to the tune of, you know, intentions probably plays 15, 10-15%. You know, state who you're being, 10-15%. Eh, the rest of it, a good 70%, is all about action. You don't take action, it's all about the action. But here's what Eric Plantenberg found out. When he talked to people who were doing extraordinary things in the world, and by extraordinary I mean extraordinary, like climbing three of the world's highest mountain peaks back to back without a break in a third of the time it takes the average mountaineer uh, to climb just one peak okay that's extraordinary think about it three peaks back to back in a third of the time it takes an average mountaineer which is an extraordinary person anyway the, the time it takes them to climb just one okay extraordinary outcomes legendary, mind-bending, rule-breaking outcomes, which if you're purpose-oriented and you want to change the world, that's kind of the playground we're playing in, right? What he found out when he took this three stages of results creation to them and the average person's answer, he brought it to these guys, and here's what they had to say. About 10 to 15% intention, about 10 to 15 percent action and about 65 to 70 percent state state these are people who train prepare devote themselves to habits practices disciplines daily living habits that help them experience something particular in here so that as they're moving into climbing a mountain or running a sprint or launching a new product or a brand new business, where they're coming from, the energy they're living from is functioning at a high state that allows them to maintain intention, focus, and that allows them to act in ways that are so in alignment with state 
They don't have to take as much action. They don't have to expend as much effort. They move faster, further, and achieve more remarkable outcomes with far less output than the rest of us. Why? Because they're focusing on state. So they've switched focus. Instead of focusing on action and pouring themselves into generating something, they focus on being inside in a certain way and elevating that because their experience tells them when they're here, something explosive happens. And results, the rest of us are torquing to get a modicum outcome or output for, they're experiencing far higher outcomes with a great deal less effort because something happens here. Rule bending, mind blowing. People who routinely achieve extraordinary things are focused on the state. Now, inside the coaching world, the human evolution world, the spiritual evolution world, we've been talking about beingness for a long time, but what does that actually mean and what does it look like? Well, you can look at peak performing athletes, peak performing professionals, and this consistent devotion to creating or cultivating and optimizing an inner state is really what makes the difference. The focus that this provides them is the focus that builds the outcomes. As purpose printers, we know that state is the place we want to be building from as a direct result of this research. State ensures that we're gonna go the right way for us. No one else's way. Here's this guy climbing three mountain peaks back to back. In a third of the time, it takes a regular mountaineer to climb one. His way, no one else's way. State ensures the actions taken are taken at the right speed. In the moment, our speed, no one else's speed. Fast, slow, which way to go. State ensures we use the right kind of momentum. The, the right degree of effort. It decides efficiency for us, and it is moment specific. State ensures that actions are taken for the right reasons. It helps us stay in touch with intention. State. And yet, what is the thing that most of us find most difficult to cultivate? State. That's right, cultivating this mindset, focus, intent, where you're coming from, who you are being. And what these folks also made very, very clear is that it's less about transforming yourself into something and more about peeling back whatever prevents you from being what and who you already are. State who you already are. The two of them together, cultivated and leveraged, becomes the bedrock of extraordinary outcomes. These folks train and prepare for months, and so are we. State, where are you coming from? And are you letting yourself be you so that you can? Each step builds to an extraordinary moment with the lightest of touch, and that's what we really want, a light touch. If this has popped open your mind, if this has challenged your thinking, if this is turn things kind of topsy-turvy or affirm something you've known deep in your heart or way down in your gut, let us know. And if you've actually experimented with cultivating your state so more extraordinary outcomes come as a direct result of just being you, tell the story. Help more of us trust this truth so more of us can live there more of the time. If you know someone this could help, please make sure you share it. Hello. We've been publishing some new stuff over at soulmap.com, so if you wanna make sure you catch all the great new stuff that we just can't fit into the webisodes, make sure you subscribe. As you go out there, seeking to help yourself raise your state so that you can do more with less effort. Torque, so a light touch and a true heart touches the people you're meant to serve. Take these words with you as you go. You weren't an accident. You weren't mass produced. You aren't an assembly line product. You were deliberately planned, specially gifted, and lovingly positioned on earth by the master artisan. That's it for this episode of Soul Map TV. It's Lisa Bowles, your Soul Mapper, signing off. Mm -hmm.